TCU looking for their fifth win in one week's time. Again, here at home, wrapping up this Hilton Garden Inn FGCU Invitational. Trying to get it to Samuel down low. Very uh, well guarded. That is Petty pushing him all the way out to the three-point line. Samuel showing off the handles and then losing it. Chonqui goes to the floor, and it'll be a shot clock violation in Mastodon's basketball. Well, one of the things the big dog's got to do is this. Don't dribble, because that's where the little rug rats are down there getting ready to get the ball. Keep it above your head. Turn around, dunk it. You see John Kaufman, the head coach for Purdue Fort Wayne. Incredible success in his time up there. Beat Indiana in back-to-back -back seasons early in his tenure. And his team for four consecutive years ranked top 15 in three-pointers per game. Uh, so his team likes to move the ball quickly. They like to take outside shots. And they've got some good experience on this year's roster. It's a pretty tight rotation. And there is Godfrey, who we talked about in the opening, hitting his first shot of the night. Well, Godfrey's going to be Godfrey. And the Eagles hope they can keep him under 35. Don Martin gets a couple of screens. He tries a triple and knocks it down. Zero field goals last night for Dunn Martin. Quickly gets one here today. Well, see, the beauty when you have depth is your guys don't always have to score. Chong Kui off the mark. Weak side rebound to Dakota Rivers. Don Martin always pushing the pace. Good handles. He can shoot. And last night, 13 assists for Tavy and Dunn Martin, which was one away from a school Division I record. There's Dunn Martin kicking it out. Caleb Cato will try the three off the mark. Rebounded by Chong Kui. Godfrey ahead of the pack. Sidesteps it Dunn Martin and draws the foul. Well, last night we saw Southeastern Louisiana. They play fast tonight. It looks like it'll be a similar story for the Mastodons as you look at Michael Fly in his fourth year as the mayor of Dunk City. Spent seven years as an assistant with this program before being promoted. Was a member of the 2013 Dunk City team that went to the Sweet 16. You know, both these coaches have embedded their philosophy with these young men. And uh, let's see who's DNA, sir is supreme tonight. Godfrey makes both. He's got the first five points for Purdue Fort Wayne. It used to be Indiana Purdue Fort Wayne, but rebranded to just Purdue Fort Wayne about five years ago. And that's why they're wearing the Boilermakers colors. They are now um, black and gold. Rivers runs the baseline. Cato. Keeps his dribble, gets around one defender inside for Samuel, working on Planutis. Lays it up, no good, but a travel is called first and a turnover for the Eagles. Well, see, I want the big man to get down, get down closer to the hole where he can just turn and dunk or turn and shoot. It seems like the Mastodons have done a good job early of pushing Samuel off that block. Well, I'll tell you what, it's a, <laughs> when you're pushing the big sled, that, that wears thin on you over the course of time. Has Samuel really wreaked havoc on the Lions last night. His season high in points. Got a lot of those opportunities early in the game. Reverse layup doesn't go. That was Petty on the attempt. Eagles across midcourt. Good denial. They protect the rim well with Samuel, Rivers, and others down there. Dan Martin forcing one in for Samuel. Trying to go around Petty. He does. Misses the shot and Petty the rebound. Here come the Mastodons. Pipkins with the reverse layup. Can't get the roll and Cato the board. Well, see, once again, they're worried about the big dog blocking their shots. That was forced to sort of alter what he wanted to do. Don Martin backing down Chong Kui. Crossing over now. This is a good point guard matchup. Down low, Cato on the cut, blew the layup. Oh, great cut, but couldn't finish. Well, see, you got to finish in a game like this. Godfrey into the corner, Pipkins on the baseline. Right back to Godfrey, a terrific look. Missed it, off the back of the rim. He won't miss many of those, I'm telling you. 35 points last night for Godfrey. After a strong performance on Friday, 19 points in the win over the Lions on Friday. 
Oh, Rivers' pass is knocked away by Planutis. Purdue Fort Wayne going to the bench for the first time as Cameron Benford and Deontay Billups check in. Michael Fly will go with the Tulsa transfer. Austin Ritchie, first man off the bench. Well, Austin Ritchie nailed some threes last night, which really helped the flow of the Eagles. He's an experienced player in his fourth year of college basketball. Largy into a sea of gold jerseys. Can't spin it home. Planutis will pull the three. Short, Samuel the board. Yeah, that, that's another one right there who can shoot. Caddo lobs to begin the night. Shot clock winding down. Dunn Martin gives it up. Richie for three. Short. Largy the offensive board. Trying to get rid of it is fouled. Well, Largy is, see, when you're having a bad shooting night, guys like Largy do the dirty things. Benford called for the foul. And Largy, I love your term, J Webb, Swiss Army knife. He does everything. He does everything. Scores a lot of his buckets, moving towards the basket. Can be creative around the rim, beats guys off the dribble, especially down the baseline. One of the things that's going to, I think, be a factor is down the stretch. FGCU is deeper than Purdue, Fort Wayne. These kids have played a lot of minutes over the last few days. When does fatigue become a factor? Yeah, I think that's going to be a, a major factor down the stretch. Dunn Martin's three rattles out. FGCU used their entire roster last night, and most of the starters didn't play more than six or seven minutes in the second half. Corner three, no good. That one batted around, and it ends up with Richie. Dunn Martin crossing over into traffic. Contact, no foul called, but out of bounds off the Mastodons. Andre Weir coming in for the first time for FGCU, giving Samuel a breather. Weir played very well last night, scored in double figures. Coach Fly pleading for a, a foul there. Largy in the corner. Well defended by Pipkins. Caddo. Had the lob for Weir. Shot clock already down to seven. Bounce pass, Dunmarin into traffic, lost it. Oh, Weir to the floor to take it away from Petty, and a jump ball is called. Well, it's Purdue Fort Wayne possession. When you're in traffic, you cannot throw bounce passes. You can't throw any passes. The freshman Joe Joe Peterson enters for Fort Wayne, and Matt Halverson, the fifth year senior, in for the Eagles, transfer from Western Carolina. He hit three threes last night. Someone they're trying to get going. He is a prolific shooter. Well as, well, as people shot last night, it's the exact opposite tonight. But that's going to happen. The thing that can always be consistent is defense. And the Eagles have been pretty tough on the defensive end, too, this weekend. And a nice move. That is Rob Petty using the window. Well, Petty spent two years at Vermont, an outstanding mid-major program, played in the NCAA tournament, and then red-shirted before coming over to the Mastodons. That one off the mark from Dunmartin. Pipkins across half court. He's a transfer as well, and a nice move inside. Petty scores, and a quick timeout for Michael Flo. Oh, the ball is sticking in the hands of one man. And Dunmartin. At the controls, trying to use some screens, lobbing back door for Weir. It's intercepted, but a foul first. And it's going to be on the Eagles. That's Largy with a moving screen. So, see, if you're going to throw alley oops or you're going to go inside, you got to throw the ball if the guy's 6'11. You got to throw the ball like he's 7'4. Let him go up and get it. FGCU one for nine from the field, four turnovers, and it equates to a five-and-a-half-minute scoring drought. Look at Godfrey go all the way to the rim. Well, right now, Purdue Fort Wayne is just having their way with the Eagles. FGCU trying to get it going offensively. Halverson from the corner. No. Petty the rebound. Pipkins wants to push. 
Godfrey Pipkins driving on Largy. Tough angle, flipped it down low. Petty wasn't ready. Halverson scoops it up. Fast break for FGCU. Dunn Martin pulls up. Halverson gets it back. Oh, wide open look. Richie missed it. We'll see on nights when you aren't shooting well, defense has got to be your, your call. That one spins off. Largy the board. That was Billups on the three. Both teams, a bit of a slow start, especially with the Eagles. Halverson gives it up. Oh, Dunn Martin, a tough contested triple, and he knocks it down. Well, he is going to make his shots. And Dunn Martin, number one in the A Sun in scoring, averaging 19 per game. But right now, it's a matter of stops. Billups, bounce pass underneath. Petty got weir in the air. The help comes from Richie. But a fact, Jonathan Desjardins has checked in for Purdue Fort Wayne. He's see a the, sophomore. You're, see, you're 20 seconds in the shot clock, and the offense is still at half court. And Luis Rallone running the show now. Halverson, Richie, back to Halverson. Gets by Planutis. Bounce pass stolen. Pipkins came over and snatched it. And we've got a double dribble. Oh, Pipkins was off to the races, but they say he double dribbled. Well, see, once again, you cannot throw bounce passes to big people in traffic. You've got to put the ball up or shoot it. I mean, there's a lot of hands down there. Yeah, Rallone, a much different pace than that of Dunn Martin, much more methodical. Dunn Martin, lightning quick. Here's Halverson, wide open for three. No. Samuel, the offensive board, flips it in. We'll see. Put the ball up, let the big dog go to work. Sometimes a missed shot is, a, is as good as an offense as you can run. As well as Samuel played last night, he only had one rebound at halftime. He has three already tonight. Well, see, there were a lot of missed shots last night. Yeah, Eagles were on fire. There's a steal. Cato lost it for a moment. Drops it back to Rallone. Rallone through the lane. Drops to Richie. Cato, a contested three, and he got it. Caleb Cato makes it a two-point game. See, offense looks much better when the ball goes through the hole. Eagles in a zone defense now. With Samuel posting up in the middle. Sean Quay fires it to the baseline. And there's a block for Kevin Samuel. And he went up. I knew that wasn't going to end well. Good feed down low for Richie. And that was Desjardins underestimating the reach of Samuel. Oh, Richie, a long three. Yes. Just like that, FGCU's got the lead. And a time. It is going to be very, very pretty if you're an Eagle fan. Still in that zone. It seems to have slowed the Mastodons down. Corner three, Godfrey well short. Oh, and there's that outlet pass. They've got both point guards in together right now. Here's Rallone. Dunn Martin playing off the ball. Oh, bad pass. Oh, look at Richie popping up in the air. That could have been a breakaway for Planutis. Here's Tavian off the dribble around Sean Kui. Pulls up, missed it. Look at Largy. That was Dunn Martin who tapped it out to him. Largy the floater, no. Rebound to the Mastodons. Well, they missed that one. Some opportunities missed there. Sean Kui swings into the corner. It goes Billups into three white jerseys. Sean Kui for the lefty three off the mark. Samuel snatches it off his hip. Dunn Martin through traffic, lost it. Well, he's got to see. They are not calling those fouls. They're letting them go in. So he's got to go in and distribute. Step back for Godfrey. No. Mastodons 0 for their last six from the field. 
Rolone calls out the play, gets two screens at the top of the yard. Baseline feed, Largy slams it down. Well, see, that's what you do. Find the cutter, find the guy coming through the back door. Yeah, gorgeous play. They brought the bigs up top, and Largy had space underneath. Three-point lead, the largest of the day for FGCU. Phillips had to get rid of it. Planudis steps back. The open three, book it. Tied well, at 16. Well, there's a reason that young man spends time in the gym. Transfer from St. Bonaventure, a program that's been ranked throughout this season. Malone looking, driving, lobbing. Samuel fouled. Makes one out of two there to give FGCU the lead back. That is our second lead change of the night to go with a couple of ties as well. We've gone back to man to man now. And a reach in called on Rivers who was guarding the smaller Godfrey. Neither team near the bonus yet. Just the fourth team foul for the Eagles. See, I, you know, he reached, I mean, I'm always amazed how people can question a call when the man actually had his hand on it. Maybe they had a bad angle. I mean, that that's a pretty good call. You got to move your feet. If you're reaching, you ain't listening to the preaching. <laughs> Here's Pipkins around the screen. Guarded by Samuel. Had to pop it out. Billups into the corner. Good look for Pipkins. Got it. Pipkins gets the three, and the Mastodons go up two. And a warning called on Pipkins for some celebrating. Officials conversing here, figure out. Oh, they've called a technical on Pipkins. Yeah. So Dunmarin's going to get two free throws here. You see Coach Hoffman bringing the troops together as Tavian oh. makes the first. The thing is, we saw this last night where that game got a little chippy. Right now the referees are trying to establish this. No crap. Play ball. Yeah, it got very chippy at times last night. This one's been a little cleaner, but. Well, but see, let your play do the talking, okay? Yeah, because Pipkins just gave back two of those three points that he, oh, he see, earned. What have you done to help your team? 19 apiece. Don what? Martin to Rivers. Baseline Samuel, one-on-one -on -one with Petty. Over Petty, got the roll. You see, he'll go over Petty all day. He'll go over Petty all day. Into the corner, open look again. Pipkins, no. Petty the offensive rebound and shoveled it right in. Well, see, someone's got to box out. See, you cannot be passive when the ball goes on the rim. Eight points now for Rob Petty to lead the Mastodon. Largy lobbing, had it knocked away, gets it back and missed the layup. We got blocked. And yeah, Petty got a piece of it. Oh, and a block for Caleb Cato trailing the play. See, that's what hustle does. Yeah, he got back to in a blink. And we'll make Godfrey think about it the next time he fires a transition three. Well, the thing there was Godfrey didn't see him coming. So Chong Kui going to try and inbound it over Samuel here. Gets it into the corner. This is Benford. Pipkins always looking to shoot. Well defended by Halverson. Chong Kui able to save it. Under six minutes to go. And a foul called against FGCU. It'll be a baseline inbound. Called on Samuel.
Godfrey looking for Benford. And a foul called on Purdue Fort Wayne. Was it a foul or did he step out of bounds? Oh, it was a foul. Yeah, foul on Benford for pushing Caddo. See, once again, here's Caddo's effect. Defensively, he has changed the course of this. Could be the change of the course of this last 553 if FTC can get their offense going. He seems to have started to earn that role of Wiley veteran. He's known as being a shooter, but he can do a lot more than that. And he's improved a lot of different aspects of his game the last couple of years. And, and he had to deal with a, a major hip surgery in the offseason, was out for six months. That one off the, the rim. Cato saves it, fires it inside. Samuel over the top. Missed the layup, but will go to the line. There's Cato again in that corner. 50-50 ball gives you an opportunity. And when you've got Samuel under there, you really can just throw it up. And that one looked good. Back-to-back -back free throw makes for Samuel as Richie returns. See, the beauty of depth is that you can bring pieces in and out until you find that combination that works. Eagles have played nine different guys so far. And they can play 11. Yeah. And they have for most of their games. Samuel got them both. Three of four from the line. And it's a two-point Eagle lead. Going back to the zone. It worked last time. Inside for Billups, outside for Godfrey, defended by Dun Martin. Chong Kui. He's trying to find the gaps. Yeah, shot clock down to five. Pass was deflected. He's got to hurry. Chong Kui has to shoot, puts up the floater and got it. Just before the buzzer. Chong Kui the other way. Dishes to Billups, who lays it in. See, you, you. Using the screen, Dun Martin fires it the other way. Cattle around the back dribble. Bounces for Dun Martin. Ten on the shot clock. And he was fouled. Tavian draws the foul, we'll get two free throws. But see, you can't give away a basket. As good a player as he is, you can't have your pocket picked. Especially in that situation, he wasn't making any progress towards the hoop, just trying to set up the offense. The next thing he knew, he was chasing Chong Kui the other way. At least Purdue Fort Wayne players, they've, they've got some pretty good college experience. Chong Kui played in the NCAA tournament for Mount St. Mary's. Rob Petty played in the NCAA tournament for Vermont. And you have Pipkins who played at Loyola Chicago, a perennial NCAA tournament team, but that was in the year that COVID wiped out the season, so they didn't get a chance to play in the NCAA tournament as Dun Martin splits the pair. FGCU by one, coming up on our final timeout of the first half here. FGCU back into that 2-3 zone. Halverson harassing John Kui. They get it back to him, five to shoot. Into the paint, open look for Billups. Book it. Well, see, you can't leave him out there. Someone's got to get a hand up. The scouting report says Billups can shoot. And uh, the Eagles are leaving him wide open. Yeah, Billups right around 45% now for the year from three. Dun Martin had to give it up. The hand for Cato. Cato all the way through the lane. The man, Billups, is a 42% person from the three. Everybody knows that on FGCU. So when you see him, you better get a hand in front of him. Shot right over the zone with the shot clock winding down on the last possession. Cato's free throws tie it up at 26. There's another open three. This time it's Pipkins who comes up short. Eagles looking to push. Back to Dunmartin, now Cato. Into the corner. 
Largy for three, and it's good. We'll see, that's what's good ball movement. If you share the ball, good things will happen. Another corner look for this time. Pipkins is going to drive, had to pass Billups into the corner. Pipkins flashed through that baseline in a second. Reverse layup doesn't go. Samuel the rebound. Well, see, what happened was Samuel once again altered that. Don Martin into traffic. Are they going to give him the continuation? That's I don't think so. Boy, I tell you, that should be an N1. Oh, Shane Land was so close to dropping that arm to signal and one, but instead it's going to be a one and one as FGCU is now in the bonus. Andre Weir is going to come in to give Samuel a break. Planutis back in for the Mastodons. Yeah, Coach Fly pleading for a three-point play there. He knew that Shane Land was very close to calling it. And Dunn Martin connects on the first, so he'll get another. Largest lead now for FGCU. How they close out this half. Both teams, Purdue Fort Wayne and FGCU, is going to weigh a lot as the. And when you see people missing free throws who are good free throw shooters, it's legs. Three games in three days. Yeah. Fatigue could be a factor. And the last couple threes for Purdue Fort Wayne came up short from guys who normally make open shots. So that I think is going to be a major factor towards the end, and it should favor the Eagles. Planutis from the corner, no good. Caddo high for the board. No numbers. Dunn Martin with it. Caddo driving all the way to the rim, and he scores, plus the foul. Caleb Caddo forcing the issue for FGCU. Well, just to piggyback on this minute thing, Godfrey played 43 minutes last night. He played 35 minutes two games ago. That's a lot of time on the pine. Yes. And we've said that all weekend long. Eagles have a, a deeper roster than these other three teams here this weekend. The high end talent is there for all the teams, but... Seventh, eighth, ninth best player on the Eagles. Probably a bit superior. Pipkins right side. Billups, a long three, and he's got another. Billups cuts the deficit in half. If you don't believe, now you've seen, you better get a hand in his face. And an offensive foul. Weir pushed off. Well, see, Weir has a propensity for moving his feet. He's got to learn to be still. I think that was more of a push than a moving screen. And that's his second, first eagle with two fouls. Uh, but it's nice when you can put a 6'11 experienced man back on the flow. And he's going to anchor this zone. Samuel back in. 120 to play. Richie left the corner open. Pipkins well short again. They're getting it into the hot hand with Cato. Dunn Martin will pull short. Pipkins had it taken away by Samuel, who Cato wisely let it go because it would have been a backcourt call, and now they do call it a backcourt violation. I'm interested on that one. Well, I guess they say that Samuel had possession when he slung it down the court, which certainly is a matter of judgment. And Coach Fly wanted that to be good. Certainly, Cato thought he could go back and get it. They may want to get the other referee involved. I know he's talking to Fly. Well, zone is rotating well for FGCU. Well, but they got to get out when they see the guy in the slot, in the gap. Like right there, see? Good look for Billups. And he's got another one. Third three of the half for Billups. 11 points to lead all scorers for Deontay Billups, who came in averaging only seven per game. And just like that, we're tied. We've got a three second differential here. Dunn Martin winding it down, 10 on the shot clock. Here come the Eagles. 
six. Don Martin spinning through the lane, lays it up and in. A heave coming for the Mastodons. Godfrey over to start in the first half. And they knew they had the ball coming out to start the half, and Coach Fly drawing up a beautiful play. Samuel on the steal, and he throws it right to Chong Kui. Well, see, that's why big men should just catch it, stop, and give it to a guard. Petty on the drive. Rivers went down, and they're going to call a block. Well, that was interesting. Now the second foul on Rivers. Both teams with their starting fives out there here in the second half. It's just Godfrey on the lob. Godfrey had only seven points in the first half. Again, 35 points in the overtime loss to Western Michigan last night. There's a nice maneuver in the air from Pipkins. Well, Purdue Fort Wayne uh, is a place I know very well. I coached tennis there for a while. Got one off the mark. And uh, Butch Perchan, who's here at FTC, was the athletic director. Godfrey on the response to tie it up. Okay, now you gotta play defense. You gotta stay in front of people. You gotta move your feet. Jay Webb, when these two teams met last, it was 2004, both these schools were Division II schools at the time. Cato drops it to Samuel, it's stolen, and tight roping that baseline is Godfrey. He brings it up towards midcourt. Into the corner, Pipkins for three, yes! Mastodons have the lead. Well see, when you throw sloppy passes, this is what happens. Terrific transition basketball by Purdue Fort Wayne. Pipkins the punctuation mark. And it's a three-point Mastodon lead. Eagles led by four just seconds ago. Oh, Don Martin, a beautiful floater. 14 points already for Dun Martin. John Kui swings. Godfrey puts it on the floor. The help comes. That was Planutis missing the lay-in. Knocked out of bounds. It'll stay with Purdue Fort Wayne. We'll see once again Samuel. What did he do? He altered the shot. There's your guy Billups coming back in. 11 points in the first half for Billups. Pretty balanced scoring, especially on the Fort Wayne side. Chong Kui lost his footing, there it goes. Largy with numbers ahead of the pack. Missed the lay and did not have the handle, but a foul well, is called. But part of that miss was, was body contact. So two free throws for Cyrus Largy. First trip to the line today. You see, what they did was they basically said to Largy, you aren't dunking this on us. So if you want two points, you're going to have to go to the free throw line. Hey, hey, hey. Largy 11 for 20 this season. Makes the first. Largy got them both, FGCU back on top. That is our sixth lead change of the night. They've got Largy on Godfrey, arguably their best defender at the guard position. Largy, Samuel on the help, Godfrey fires cross court, John Kui on the drive, pulls up in the lane, but a foul first, they're gonna say Dun Martin nudged him. See, your FGC was getting beat off the dribble. So Purdue Fort Wayne runs that touch paint offense where they want to get touches in the paint, work curls, and then they want people to come off curls going downhill to the basket. John Kui on Cato. Planutis, a good look. Dun Martin got his hand on that one, and Petty is swatted by Largy, Ooh. who is whistled for the foul. Look like all ball. We'll get another look. Tough to tell from that angle, but Largy certainly 
where he needed to be. Petty is going to shoot a couple of free throws. He's a 75% free throw shooter. Eight points, seven rebounds already in this game for Ra Petty. 16 and nine yesterday, or on Friday, 15 and five yesterday. He is at a terrific tournament. The thing about Largy is expression very seldom changes. And that was about as much expression as you'll see from him after that foul call. Just a confused look, and Pipkin's going to come back in. And Richie replacing Largy at the four. Or, sorry, replacing Rivers at the four. Same exact substitution pattern as the first half for Michael Fly. Oh, Pipkin's flying in for the rebound. Billups works it around. A fresh 20 for the Mastodons. Pipkin's got around Richie, and he's fouled hard. You see how quickly Cato closed from the weak side there? He came well, flying see, in. That's what the weak side guy has to do. If Richie hadn't fouled him, I think Cato was going to have the block. Well, Pipkin's. 71% free throw shooter. Pipkins got them both. Macedon's now six of eight from the free throw line tonight. They've got the lead right back. 41-40, Purdue, Fort Wayne. Wanted to get it to Samuel. Richie still looking. Outlets for Dunn Martin. Cross court pass. Cato, baseline, gives it up. The extra pass. Largy for three. No. Off the backboard. Pipkins with it. Pipkins pulls the three. Short. Samuel in position. The two transfers play catch. Dunn Martin into the land of the bigs. And a foul is called on Sean Kui. And he looks confused. That's his third. That's a lot of fouls early. Seven fouls combined before our first media timeout. Yep. Because people are going to the hole. There's, so there's body contact happening. Dunn Martin good on the first. Benford and Peterson back in. Halverson returns for the Eagles. Coach Fly is really, and both these coaches are doing a great job of just moving their players around because they want to have their studs in that last 9-20 ready to roll. So really good coaching on both sides here. Yeah, both coaches realizing we're only 20 seconds away from the media timeout, so getting some of their starters a blow. And there's a three, Billups again. Billups four for six from three-point land. Dunn Martin looking for the answer, and he's got it. Well, doesn't leave. He's gonna, he's gonna put it up. And Largy gets his hand on that. Looking, there's Billups. He's been hot. Billups down the lane this time. Petty the follow, and he's fouled. So Petty with a couple of free throws. Already with eight points and now eight rebounds in this game. So very close to a double-double already. Ties good. us up at 45. Very good free throw shooter at 75%. Shot 
shoots him one-handed. That left hand is off the basketball, makes them both. That is our 12th lead change of the night. This one's been close throughout. Largest lead for either side has been eight. Halverson threw it away. Pipkins the other way. Pipkins coast to coast is swatted. Samuel pinned it to the backboard. Richie trailing down the lane ahead of steam. Finds Halverson. They reset to Dunmartin. Coach Fly calls out a play. Dunmartin driving. Got by his man, lost it, but it's out of bounds off of Purdue Fort Wayne and a foul called first. Boy, they saved him on that one. That was Peterson called for the foul. And quickly, Planutis in for Billups. Here's Largy crossing over into Godfrey. Off the window, no. His put back, no. Samuel on the other side scores. Boy, Samuel just said, that's, I'm a grown man. I'm taking that one. Yeah, Eagle sticking with it to regain the lead. Godfrey had it tipped by Largy. Seems like Largy has been on Godfrey for most of the night, and he's obviously done a good job. Godfrey still in single digits after scoring 35 yesterday. Well, but part of that single digits is because you've got uh, Pipkins and Billups in double figures. Yeah, they have shot it pretty well aside from Godfrey, who's three for seven, so not a bad night. Good inside pass. Petty is met in the air by Samuel. And it's off of Petty. That is like running into a brick wall. There shall be no layups. <laughs> He's rewriting the Ten Commandments of basketball. <laughs> if you come in the lane, come at your own risk. There will be no layups. God, he is an absolute eraser. Well, that's why he led the, the, the Big 12 in blocks. Yep, he led the Big 12 in blocks per game last year and offensive rebounds per game. And third in total rebounds in the conference. There's a three for Halverson. Eagles extend the lead to four. Well, You just don't see bigs at this level that are that good. Dunn Martin to the floor for it. Pass in by Godfrey. Nine points, four rebounds now for Cato to go with four fouls drawn. He has been in the right place at the right time all evening. Petty trying to face up Samuel, was looking to pass, and it's stolen by Richie. Like everything changes for the opponent when Kevin Samuel is in there. Halverson the quick trigger, and he's fouled. Boy, that'll drive the Purdue Fort Wayne staff crazy. You, what is the last thing you want? You don't want to foul a, a jump shooter. Boy, they just got blitzed out of immediate time out there. FGCU with a quick steal. Now three free throws. Halverson, 85% free throw shooter. He's just got that pure stroke. One of the best three-point shooters in Western Carolina history. Played more minutes than anybody in the SOCON two years ago. 36 games played, 971 minutes. Got all three, largest lead of the day for FGCU. Well, I'm telling you, the way Purdue Fort Wayne shoots threes, there's no lead big enough left than 20. And six seconds on the shot clock. And that's a quick five points out of the timeout for the Eagles. They work it around for Godfrey. Halverson is gonna be called for the block. He has made a habit of drawing charges early in the season, but not that time.
What'd you think? That was, that was a charge. He doesn't flop. Yeah, he, he took that as professionally as you could. I mean, completely still. Made it look like he got completely flattened. Well, that's what happens when someone runs into you. <laughs> oh, what, what a move by Pipkins. And then the lob is just swatted. Cato to Richie, numbers for FGCU. Samuel running the floor. Can we say athleticism? You got 6'11 doing the Yodo Dodo boot. <laughs> Kevin Samuel having his way this weekend. Planutis from the corner, the answer. This game heating up in Fort Myers. Let me tell you, young men and young women, what Planutis. If you want to be a shooter, get in the gym like that young man does. His second three of the night, Dun Martin using the screen. That one was deflected. He was trying to get it inside for Samuel, but it's out off the Mastodons, and we've got ourselves a timeout. Kevin Samuel, a huge addition this year for FGCU, has got his team out to an eight-point lead here on ESPN+. Plus. Was that an oxymoron, a huge addition? Kevin Samuel has his first double-double as an FGCU Eagle, and he's done it with 12 minutes to spare. 11 points, 10 rebounds on only five shots for the TCU transfer, and, and Jay Webb, we've talked about it. I don't know if the Eagles have ever had a big man as impactful as him. Well, you know, I've only been here a few years, but, you know, I've not seen someone of his skill level playing in the post. And that's a big plus because you've got Andrew Weir who can give him uh, some rest. And he's 6'11", and he's going to get better. There's a foul. FGCU going to go back to the free throw line. See, I'm not quite sure what plan B was on that plan A. Being fouled helped him not have to make that decision. But you'll notice... As you start making threes, what happens? You're building out to turn the corner and go north and south. Halverson makes the first. Eagles have done a lot of damage from the free throw line tonight. Getting a lot of opportunities. They are now 18 for 22 from the charity strike. Well, see, if you're going to be a winning team, you've got to have people that can make free throws in crunch time. Because, once again, 11 minutes to go, 10 points is not a big enough lead against the Mastodon team. That is an 82% clip from the line tonight for FGCU. Chon Kui swings. Godfrey a good look. Over, Dunmartin, he's got it. Jared Godfrey into double figures, and he's the guy that Fort Wayne wants to get going. He will not be quiet. What did Shakespeare say? I will not go quietly into the night. Don Martin missed it. Well, see, that's a four shot. That's not a good shot. Here's the drop off. Pipkins going left. Samuel there to turn him aside. Poor shot selection can let the Mastodons back in this ball game. Godfrey defended by Cato into the paint. Billups for three. Not that time. Off the rim to Kevin Samuel. Don Martin. Foot on the gas pedal, into contact, no. Billups the other way. Drops to Chong Kui, back to Billups. Pipkins will fire away off the mark. Petty's putback doesn't go, but he'll go to the free throw line. We'll see, two times down the floor now. Tavion has taken bad shots. Bad shots can let a team like the Mastodons back in the ball game. I mean, I like his confidence, but sometimes you gotta pull him back and make better decisions. Yeah, he took some questionable shots in that USC game last week, but, yeah, but since then he's been so much better in that department. Well, I'm just saying that the last two possessions have helped the Mastodons get back in this ball game. No question. Planudis back in. There's, he's part of the student section.
As we get into the spring semester and Ace on play rolls around, that student section is going to be packed. The type of team the Eagles have out there this year. But all of a sudden, we've, we're back down to a five-point game. Luis Rolone in to run the point. Well, what did I say three minutes, two minutes ago? Ten-point lead isn't big enough if you make bad decisions. And Dunn Martin's come out after those shot-making decisions. Samuel able to get that one. Well, they got to get into their sets here quicker. Yeah, slow developing possession. Bounce pass for Samuel. Samuel on skates uses the window. That was pretty from Kevin Samuel. Working against the youngster Benford. Pipkins trying to get around Rolone. Knocked away by Largy. A turnover for the Mastodons. Largy splitting the defense and scoring. Offense coming off a of defense. Eagles get those two buckets right back. Good transition oh. basketball from the two veteran guards in Cato and Largy, and now a foul on the Eagles. Well, see, Samuel, you're out there. That's harassment. He can't shoot over you from 22 feet over seven, almost seven foot. So Chong Kui is going to get a one and one here as Petty quickly comes back in for Benford. Big free throws here for Chong Kui. All NEC, two years in a row, 15 points per game last year for the Mount. Makes the first, earns a second. First point of the night for Chong Kui, who is now seven away from 1,000 for his career. And now six away. <laughs> Coach and Fly having a great conversation there. Largy, baseline. Cato over Godfrey, short. Pipkins the other way. Eagles get back. Pipkins pulls. Missed terribly off the backboard. Battle for the rebound, more white jerseys in the area. Largy no. lost it, Chong Kui on the pickoff. Hands to Pipkins who slams it down. Well see, you can't go behind the back in traffic. What did I tell you, bad decisions will let Purdue four Wayne back in this ball game. And Coach Fly will use a top, just over eight minutes to go. Here in the final game of the Hilton Garden Inn FGCU Invitational. Largy going to go left, and See. he draws the foul on Billups. Coach Fly was lobbying for a call just like that. Well, what he was saying is he wants FGCU guys to put the ball on the floor and go to the hole, which Largy just did. And that gets Billups out of the game because that's his fourth foul. So you lose a little offense there with him going to the bench. Well, he's easier to guard on the bench than he is on the yeah. floor, obviously. <laughs> Yeah, he can't make any threes from there. 14 points for Billups. And now saddled with four fouls. He'll be out for at least a couple more minutes. They reset to Rolone. 12 to shoot. Rolone. Largy. Over Planuda. Down by six. Veteran group has won one and lost one this weekend. Godfrey cutting in. Kicks to Pipkins. Gets around Halverson. Has to reset and travel. Slipped on the lane there, and the Eagles will get it back. Well, that's just a bad break for the Mastodons because he was turning the corner. You know, kudos to the young men and women who clean up the floor because they are unsung heroes. Very important job. Oh, it really is. Keeps guys safe, but also uh, the officials will stop the game to make sure that gets done sometimes. So they are ready to, ready to clean up the mess at a moment's notice. 7.20 left. Largy puts it on the deck. All the way to the rim. No, but he's foul. Good first step by Cyrus Largy. Blowing by Peterson. Largy has an exceptionally quick step. And that was not bad defense. That's just better offense. 
it seems like that first step is a little longer than most. It's like he's almost stretching further than his usual strides. That I'm not sure of. But I know that when he steps, he's gone. Yeah. He got right by Peterson there, who quickly comes out of the game. So Cyrus makes the first. And the second. Four for four from the free throw line is Largy. Back to an eight-point advantage for the Eagles. Don Martin back in there for FGCU. Starters in there for Purdue, Fort Wayne, and a foul on the floor. It will lead to free throws, though. That is Largie's third foul. So Largie and Richie have three. And on the Fort Wayne side, Phillips, we know, has four, and Chong Kui has three. Godfrey's is a 63% free throw shooter. He got the roll on that one. Well, both teams have four players in double digits in points. Thirteen for Godfrey, but he misses the second. Touchdown lead for FGCU. Dunn Martin thought about it, but thought better of it. Uses the Samuel screen. Lob for Samuel. Catches on the block. Working on Petty. Right into Petty, over Petty, plus the foul! Oh, Bob Lanier, St. Bonaventure, backing him down, backing him down. Kiss off the glass. Boy, Kevin Samuel never saw a post he didn't like. Oh, Lord. Petty is a mounted of a man, probably the best big for the Mastodons, and he went one-on-one. -on -one. Tough angle, too, on that shot. Makes the free throw to go with it, and it's a 10-point Eagle lead. FGCU has a chance for five wins in eight days on this court. Godfrey. Bounce pass stolen by Samuel. Dun Martin wants to run. Tough pass. Largy no, can't no, reach it. No. See, you're up 10. You don't need that. See, you don't need that. Yeah. First of all, he didn't expect it. And second of all, you don't need it. Sometimes the simplest things are the simplest ways to make coaches have hair. Or not have hair. Planutis drops to Godfrey. Pipkins around the screen. Goes over Samuel and banks Whoa. it in. Gutsy shot by Pipkins. Oh, I love Pipkins. Dang, John. Fourth bucket of the night for him. Under six minutes to play, FGCU by eight. There's Samuel, top of the arc. He's going to drive. Lost it. Caddo trying to recover. He cannot. Petty ends up with it. Sean Kui across half court. Takes Dunmartin to the rim and scores. See, that's why you don't want the big man handling the ball. Sean Kui cuts it to six. And he is now two points away from 1,000 in his career. Dunmartin, the Duquesne transfer. Saw Petty, backed it out. Richie gives it back to him. Dunn Martin with the shot clock down to six, gives it up. Richie pulls up along two, didn't get the roll. Largy there off the tip, had it blocked by Planutis. Cato tracks it down in the corner. Dunn Martin for three, spins it in. Nine Boy. point lead for the Eagles. Great defense by the Mastodons. And the ball, the scramble, scramble, and then Dunn Martin just nails the three. Pipkins gets some separation oh. and drains it. Seven-point 
seven point game. Dunn Martin walks it up, slowing the tempo down. Eagles have four seniors and a junior on the court right now. Dunn Martin stepping through. It's a warning. Delay of game, wa game warning on Dunn Martin. Didn't give the ball to the official, I assume. Halverson going to come in for Richie. Eagles going a little smaller here. Largie will play the four. Benford also returning just before the final media timeout for Fort Wayne. This has been one tremendous ball game. Final ball game of six this weekend. John Quee being steered towards midcourt by Samuel. Turning, shooting over Dunn Martin, and he scores plus the foul. Congratulations to Damian Chong Kui, a thousand points in his career between Mount St. Mary's and now Purdue Fort Wayne. And he will be at the free throw line on the other side of our final media timeout. You're watching A Sun Basketball on ESPN. For one year, and has been one of the best players on the team ever since. The team's leading scorer last year. And second in scoring this year. Chong Kui to the line, looking for career point number 1,001. And we are here to see it. <laughs> Guy has played on the big stage a number of times for Mount St. Mary's. Cuts it to six. Into the hands of Dunn Martin. Game's leading scorer with 24, looking for three more. Banks it in! Dunn Martin down the hatch for three, and it's a nine-point Eagle lead. That is one. You're going, what, what, what? Nice shot. Eagles will gladly take it. Dunn Martin on the backside has the steal. Halverson pushing it ahead. He wants another three. No. Halverson the tap back. Largy battling for it. Had it blocked by Benford. Largy earns two free throws. All right, both teams have gotten hot here at the end. Purdue Fort Wayne, five for their last five from the field, but they're watching this lead get away from them. Let me tell you the confidence of Tavian Diamond Martin. 317 to go. He has no fear about putting up a three. Up to a 10-point lead now for FGCU as Petty quickly returns. Fifteen points for Cyrus Largy. Eagles are 23 for 27 from the free throw line. Well, that's where you got to be if you're going to win yeah, 80, tight ball games like this. 85 percent. Here's their man Godfrey, team's leading scorer. Nowhere to go. Had to give it up. Pipkins in the corner. Guarded well by Largy. Great defensive possession for the Eagles. Chong Kui puts it on the deck. Absolutely erased by Samuel. Boy, the volleyball selection show is coming up in 35 minutes. Where was <laughs> That was a roof job by Samuel. Let's just look at the rule of life. Small skills cannot outjump big skills. He saw that one coming from a mile away. Here's another look. Oh, that is not going to end well. <laughs> Here's a lob. Pipkins ends up with it. Missed the lay-in. I don't think it hit the rim. I guess it did. They're letting him play through it. Petty the put back, and he scores. Shot clock didn't reset, but the official is allowed the play to continue. Under two and a half left. FGCU out of the timeout with the basketball. Don Martin crossing over, using the Samuel screen, flipping it back for Largy. Largy down the lane, lays it in. See. 
Second man through is uncovered. Chong Kui, Godfrey around Cato. Now through Samuel. Samuel steps up to reject it. Chong Kui through the legs. On Largy over the top, gets the roll. Oh, he noticed he didn't go any closer than he had to. How many blocks is that for Samuel? I was just about to look. I believe that's four. Every one of them has been a highlight reel. He had six last night. Samuel had four blocks against USC. So that's three games now with at least four blocks. In case you're wondering, he does lead the conference with three blocks per game. And there's an Eagle turnover, their 15th of the game. But a lot of heavy lifting left to do for Purdue Fort Wayne. Down nine with a minute and a half to go. They do have Billups in there with four fouls. He's been their sharpshooter tonight with four threes. John Kui going quickly. Godfrey gives it up. John Kui all alone for three, yes. That quickly cuts it to a six point margin. Big possession here for FGCU. Try and put the nail in the coffin. Mastodons have been hanging around all night. Long two for Dunmartin, missed it. Godfrey the weak side rebound. There's oh. the steal for Dunmartin. And now he can work the clock. Costly turnover by Fort Wayne. And they will not foul. They're gonna let this get down under 40 before they can get the basketball back. This is a must stop now if you're the Mastodons. Eagles looking for the knockout punch. Here goes their point guard. Weaving through defenders, off the window. Samuel to put back, no. Petty fighting for it. Largy is there, but a whistle first over the back against FGCU. I wonder what took him so long. So Purdue Fort Wayne gets the ball back. They're actually gonna have free throws here on the loose ball foul. Clock down to 32 seconds remaining. These are huge free throws for Ra Petty. He is six for eight from the line so far. And he missed the first, too strong. See, take your time, he's a good free throw shooter. Slow down, because he's got the stroke. Second free throw, good. So he splits the pair, it's a five point game. Peterson and Planutis come in for defense. They'll likely foul at some point after trapping. Richie gonna come in for free throws. Oh, see. And they're gonna take Samuel out. Big round of applause for Kevin Samuel. 16 points, 13 rebounds for the big man out of TCU. Largy having some trouble getting it in, and it's knocked away by Chong Kui. It stays with the Eagles. Boy, dangerous situation there. <laughs> Just one timeout left for FGCU. Coach Fly telling his guys, don't be afraid to use it if you need it. They get it to Halverson. They need to get it over half court. Caddo. Now really has to hurry, and there's the foul. Planutis left him off, let him off the hook. They had three more seconds to get it over, and Cato was in some trouble. But they give the foul to preserve a few more seconds. 24.7 left. And now Samuel will come back in for defense. This is still just a one and one. Or I'm sorry, that is the 10th foul. So they just got into the double bonus. Cato gets two, and he makes the first. Cato, the fifth player into double figures.
Big free throws for the senior out of Cape Coral. Seven point lead, Sean Kui all the way to the rim, missed it. Lorgy the rebound. Buries himself in the corner and there's the foul, a hip check on Billups. And FGCU can breathe a sigh of relief. Yes, they can. Hard fought battle by both teams. Purdue Fort Wayne, very deep, solid basketball team, well coached. Saying hi to all my good friends from Butch Perchan and I up there in Fort Wayne, Casa D'Angelo, great Italian restaurant. Club Soda, another great jazz place. <laughs> Spent a few years up there. Wildwood Racket Club. I can't believe we went 39 minutes and 47 seconds before you started to give Fort Wayne some shout outs. Well, I mean, we were a little busy because of the play of the game, but <laughs> no, it's a great city. Enjoyed my time there, enjoy my friends, and Kelly Hartley's done a great job up there with the Mastodons, and happy to have them down here in Southwest Florida, so. And I'd be remiss if I didn't say hey to my buddy Barry Schrock, Leadership Fort Wayne, doing great stuff up there and helping the diversification of, of that community. Largie's first, off the mark. Coach Fly, stay tuned. He will join us post game to discuss this one. And boy, he's got a lot to be proud of the way his team played this week. Again, this was not their best performance of the week, but if they can pull it off, a win would be a win. Seven point game, under 10 seconds. Chonqui lost it, and that'll do it. Largie will bring it towards midcourt, and FGCU has gone 5 0 